we're going to look at investigating the composition of inks. Now there's two parts of this practical that you need to know about. The second part is distillation, which is in another video. Um, today we're going to look at chromatography. So for chromatography you need a piece of chromatography paper, which is more absorbent than normal paper. Get a ruler to set it up, and about one centimetre from the bottom you will draw a pencil line. It must be drawn in pencil because this is insoluble in water, which is one of the solvents that we're going to be using today. If it was drawn in ink, it would dissolve into the water and wouldn't travel up the paper. On that line, we're going to test four different black inks today. I'm just going to call them A, B, C and D. So on the line, you will put just a dot of each one, quite evenly spaced, otherwise they will merge into one another. And I will entitle them A, B, C and D along the bottom. Now this is now ready to um, go into one of our solvents. These inks are going to separate into their different components because they are made of a number of different components. Each of them have a different solubility. So they will travel up the paper by different amounts. So in this beaker here, we've got um, water, which is going to be our solvent. And in this beaker here, we've got ethanol, which is a different solvent that you can use. The stationary phase, stationary because it's not moving, the normal sense of the word stationary, is the paper. The mobile phase is the solvent that's actually going to be moving, mobile moving, up the paper. So it'll be water in this case, ethanol in this case. So first of all, I'm going to put this, this one into water and then I'm going to replicate the same one and put it into the ethanol just so we can compare. I've got to make sure that the pencil line goes above the water level, otherwise as we said before, the ink will go down and dissolve down into the water. So here we've got the setup of the same four inks. We've got the four inks here in water and then here in ethanol. It's quite interesting already as they've not quite finished yet, but you can see points C and D, the two pens C and D on here, haven't actually moved up the paper in the water. However, over here, all four of them have moved over. This is because some inks are soluble in water, some are not. The permanent markers, which were actually points C and D, are not water soluble. However, they will dissolve in another solvent, such as ethanol. So what we're going to be able to do in a moment, when they've finished rising up the paper, is calculate something called the RF value. Okay, so we're now in a position where we're able to calculate the RF value. Um, as you can see, on the one that was in the water, it is quite smudged. Um, and so it's going to be a lot clearer for me to show you this on this pre-prepared piece of chromatography paper. So C and D in the water, we said, were insoluble. Therefore, they haven't moved off the initial pencil line. However, A and B were water soluble. And you can see, just from looking at it, what the common components are. So in A and B, they both contain the blue component. In, in A, it's got yellow, and in B, it's got red, which is different between them. Now, although we're saying that they're about the same, the same height, the same colour, there is a much more accurate way of doing this, and that's by calculating something called the RF value. Now, to do this, we need to measure the distance from the bottom line, and I'm going to look at the blue spot, from the bottom line to the middle of the spot, which is looking at five centimetres there. We then divide that value by the distance that's from the baseline now up to the top pencil line, which is coming out at around 7.3. So the calculation we would do at the top there is five divided by 7.3 and that's the RF. Put it into the calculator. You are allowed one in the exam. 
and that comes out at 0.68, two decimal places. And that's how we calculate the RF value. If we did it for this spot, we would find that it would be exactly the same. And therefore, it's a more accurate way of identifying common substances between inks. And we could do this for each spot that we've got.